In this video, we'll be talking about the mathematics of breakups. And by breakups, we really mean anything from a rift between two people in a relationship to a schism between two corporations to even a split in a political faction into two smaller political factions. Now, the motivating question, why do we care about the mathematics of breakups? Why do we really want to analyze this? The real question we're trying to answer is given some network. So here's a network uh, and we have all these are people. So here's a person, here's a person, all these people around here, these dots are all people and the links between them. So a line between two people says they have something in common. Maybe they're part of the same family. Maybe they share a class at a university. Uh, maybe they're part of the same uh, recreational club, for example, given this network. Who holds the most political power in this network? That is, if this network were to split, we're not saying it's going to split, but if this network were to split into two networks, two smaller groups that have no connections between each other, who will be the leaders of those two groups? And who will follow those leaders into those respective groups, you know, leaving behind the other people? So it seems like to answer that question in this network, it seems kind of obvious. Maybe it's I've suggested it by drawing these two leaders kind of big and drawing these as black lines rather than gray lines. But even without that, it seems kind of uh, our intuition that these two people, let's call Mr. Red and Mrs. Blue, would be the leaders of the two separate groups. And the people they would take with them would be, for Mrs. Blue, all these green people on the outside and Mr. Red, all these pink people on the outside. And that necessarily means, in our case, in our studies, that if these two groups were to happen, if this group were to split into two groups, these links between groups, so this pink to this green, would be severed. This this link would be severed. This link between the leader of, uh, between Mr. Red and Mrs. Blue would have to be severed. And all these links would be severed. So those links being severed, we now have two distinct groups. We have the red group and we have the blue group uh, over here. So now to do our analysis, this was just kind of a toy example that I drew. We're going to be looking at a real world example by a researcher by the name of Wayne Zachary. Uh, he did studies around 1970 in a university uh, on a karate club. Let's take a look now at Zachary's karate network. Let's expand the screen here. So we see we have all the people in the network. We have number one, the instructor, and we have number 34, the precedent. And we have all the links between people shown by these black lines. Now we're going to assume this network will split into two groups. So we're going to look at the two people who have the highest degree, the top two. And as it turns out, as we can kind of visually guess, that's going to be the instructor, number one, and the precedent, number 34. Now what we'll do is we'll color the instructor, number one, blue. We'll color the precedent, number 34, red. And what we'll do is for everybody else, we'll see, do they have more links to the instructor or the precedent? And that really comes down to the fact that if somebody has a link to the instructor, and not the precedent, they get the color of the instructor. And if it's the other way around, if they have a link to the instructor, the uh, precedent and not the instructor, they get the color of the precedent. Now, in the case that they have links to both, or they have links to neither, we leave them colored as white and try to deal with them in the next iteration. All right, let's expand this guy. We see everyone colored a darker shade of red here is going to be with the uh, precedent, and everyone colored this lighter shade of blue here is going to be with the instructor. There's still a lot of people who are colored white. For example, let's look at this guy, this number 20. He has three links. One is to the instructor, one is to the precedent, and one is to somebody else who is also colored white, which is why they weren't colored in the first round, because we couldn't decide whether they would go with the instructor or the precedent at this point. Now, in the next iteration, what we do is we look at each person who's still colored white. These people we're not sure about. And we look at all of their neighbors. So let's look at number 17. This is the person on the very left here. This number 17 is connected only to blue people. So we're going to assume that this person will go with the blue group, uh, the group of number one. Now let's look at somebody like number, uh, let's look at somebody like number 25 at the very bottom here. This person has three connections. Two are two people who are colored white. And another one is to number 28, which is colored red. So we're going to assume this person will go with red people because uh, they have more connections to the red group than the blue group. Now, what about number 20? They have a connection to the main blue person, the main red person, that's number one and 34, and to someone who's also colored white still. But the fact that that number 20 comes after the number two. So what happens with number two? Number two we see is going to be colored blue after the next iteration. And so number 20 will have more connections to the blue group, uh, i.e. it'll have one connection to the blue group through number two, uh, and it'll have no connections to the red group, um, that is besides 34. So it'll be colored blue as well. So that's kind of how we sort out the rest of the, the white nodes. And let's see what happens when we go ahead and do our second iteration. We see every single node is colored now. And it's colored either a blue or some kind of red. So we see here, our accuracy is 94.12% about. And how many people does that come out to? Remember, there were 34 people in the uh, karate club. So we're going to multiply that number, that 0.9412-ish times 34. And we get 32 people predicted correctly out of 34. So that's pretty good. It seems our naive approach, even though it does seem very simplistic, does end up working very, very well for this community detection.
Now that seemed very simplistic, um, but it did seem to work. It gave us a very high accuracy. Um, but now you're probably asking, you know, are there more complicated methods? Are there more interesting methods we can use? And the answer is yes. The method that Wayne Zacher used in his original paper, and I'll link this paper in the description because it's actually a pretty interesting read. Uh, the method that he used was that he looked at a minimum cut. And let me define uh, roughly what I mean by that. So what I mean by that is this is a cut we chose between these between this network. We could have chosen any other cut, really. We could have drawn a cut, you know, something like here. And we could have put these two people in their own network and put everybody else in a different network. Now, there's probably some reason we didn't do that. It doesn't seem like the right thing to do. It seems like this orange cut right here, which severs these connections, seems like a much better idea than to do any other kind of cut. Now, let's kind of solidify what we mean. In Zachary's Karate Club paper, and the paper that he wrote, uh, he had weights between each of these edges. And these weights were determined by how strong the connection was or how many connections there were. For example, whether some people were uh, just two classmates or whether they were classmates. Also, they were uh, in the same recreational club. Also, they were, you know, maybe they were even brother and sister, something like that. Um, based, based on those connections. So, for example, let's just give uh, to our network here some weights. Let's say each of these weights that is going to get severed through this cut right here has weight one. And that might make sense because they're between these two groups that are end up separate. They might not be very strong connections, maybe just connections in passing, acquaintances, things like that. Let's say these acquaintances within these two groups that we have set up here are much stronger. For example, maybe this one's two, maybe this one's three, maybe this one's uh, five, and maybe this one here is two, three, you know, four, connections like that. So now what we want to try to do, and this seems like it makes sense, is that we want to cut this network. We want to cut it so that the, the, the lines we're cutting, the connections that we're kind of severing, are of the smallest weight. So we're getting the minimum cut. So what happens when we cut it here along this orange line? We're cutting one, two, three, four. So this cut has, we can assign it kind of a value four. Now what happens if we did this brown cut that was suggested a little bit earlier? Now this is doing a lot more. For example, it's cutting one, two, uh, it's cutting three, four, it's cutting five connections. And we said that these connections, uh, it's not cutting this one, sorry. It's cutting these four connections. And we're saying that these connections are weighted much more heavily. For example, if the connect, if each of these connections is weighted two, we're getting two, four, six, eight. So this cut already has value eight, which is exceeding this four. So based on those assumptions we're making, and it, it, he does it much more concretely in his paper, I suggest you check it out. I'll put the link in the description again, uh, is that we're only cutting four here. So we're making the least amount of severing connections. We're, we're, you know, kind of cutting our losses in the least amount rather than, you know, cutting these high level connections here. And the same thing, we don't want to put a cut on the red side because it's going to have the same issue of being higher than four. So that's kind of what he did. And the algorithm, the exact algorithm he used to do this, and I think we'll do a video on this because it's really interesting for other reasons. It's called the Ford Fulkerson algorithm. So Ford Fulkerson. This algorithm actually has many, many other applications. And I think we will do a video on it. It's a very interesting algorithm. But that's how he that's what he used to get the minimum cut. So this actually has a lot of applications, whether you use this, this uh, Ford Fulkerson algorithm or whether you just go through the naive process that we used, which got us pretty high accuracy. Uh, by the way, with this process, he got uh, 33 out of 34 predicted correctly. So he did one better than we did, which is a pretty good improvement, actually. So uh, whether you use this or whether you use our method, uh, the naive method, um, this has a lot of different applications. For example, this was with a karate club, but you can do this with uh, politics. You can look at where political power is centered across the world, uh, maybe within the UN, maybe within some other political body. And you can say, if this were to get split into two or three or four K groups, which would be the leaders of those K groups? And, you know, which uh, countries, which entities would go with each of those leaders? And even if the group has no intention of splitting, whether it never will split, it still really helps to know where the power is centered in a network, because that that you can you can uh, you can look at how those people have power, who those people have power over, and whether there's expected to be any shifts in power over a certain amount of time. So hopefully this was kind of interesting. Uh, in the next few videos, we'll be looking a little bit deeper into machine learning. We'll be looking at uh, a method called k-means to predict the weather.